Welcome back to Roots Music History. I interrupt our scheduled broadcasting to bring you breaking news. This is the craziest story I think I've heard in a really long time. As soon as I saw this headline, I absolutely knew I had to drop everything and cover this story. If you are following me over on Instagram, or if you saw my post on the community page this morning, you know that I am working on another Roots rockumentary at the moment, and I posted a clue on my Instagram of what that is. But I have to interrupt our scheduled shows because this is absolutely absurd. If you haven't heard about this already, Paul McCartney has officially found his bass guitar that went missing in 1972. Okay, this guitar has been missing for 52 years. I'm recording this on February 17th, 2024. If you ever saw the documentary Don't F With Cats, it was a documentary that came out a while ago and it was all about web sleuths solving this mystery from basically anything that they had on the internet and Facebook groups and all of that. This is exactly like Don't F With Cats. And this story is basically the reason for my existence. I myself obviously am a music journalist and a researcher. And so this is the type of story that just really gets me going. The way that everything just comes together so perfectly for this bass guitar to be found is truly I say it all the time on this channel, divine music intervention. There's no other explanation for it. As I tell you the full details of how this bass went missing and how it was found, you will see how everything just happened so perfectly and the timing was absolutely perfect for Paul McCartney to get his beloved bass guitar back. Two days ago, headlines started pouring out in the media about Paul McCartney's bass being found after more than 50 years being missing. Paul McCartney played this bass guitar on two album releases from the Beatles. You can distinctly hear the guitar on the recordings Love Me Do, She Loves You, and Twist and Shout. It was 1961 when Paul McCartney walked into the Steinway shop in the town center of Hamburg, Germany. There was this violin bass guitar that caught his eye, and it was only 30 pounds, so it was something he could most definitely afford. He bought the guitar right there on the spot and immediately fell in love with it. According to Paul, quote, for a light, dinky little bass, it had a very rich sound. As the Beatles rose to fame, Paul was almost always seen with this violin bass guitar. He played it through hundreds of gigs and concerts. He was even playing this bass when the Beatles met their manager, Brian Epstein, at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, England. So this was just an iconic piece of music history. But things took a tragic turn for Paul McCartney and his beloved bass in 1972. It was a Tuesday evening on October 10th when the famous guitar, along with $1,250 worth of equipment was stolen out of their band's truck in London. The very next morning after this equipment was stolen, Paul McCartney made a desperate plea to whoever the thieves were to please return his bass guitar. This plea went international in newspapers everywhere from London to Canada to the United States of America. Although it wasn't a headline story, it was still a pretty substantial part of each newspaper's page. Paul McCartney, pleas for thieves to return bass guitar. Even though this plea went international and everyone was aware of the fact the bass had been stolen, nothing really came out of this. And I didn't see Paul McCartney mentioning a specific reward amount anywhere. I almost wonder if he had put up a reward and if that reward had gone international, if it would have gotten more traction and if it would have been returned right then and there. I think it probably would have been, uh, but I didn't see anything like that. Paul was basically just pleading to the thieves to bring it back. A few years after the bass guitar was stolen, Paul McCartney was in a meeting with his technical manager, Keith Smith, and another man named Nick. I'm unsure how to pronounce Nick's last name. It's either Wass or Wass. It's W-A-S-S, -S, but we will just call him Nick. Nick worked for the manufacturer who had manufactured Paul McCartney's original bass guitar. Nick was working with Paul McCartney to build a replica guitar, or not necessarily a replica guitar, but just to build another bass guitar for Paul McCartney. And Paul McCartney was talking about his beloved bass that had gone missing and had been stolen from him. And at one point, Paul made kind of a joke and said, well, you work for Hofner. You should know where my bass is. Where's my lost bass? And Nick obviously didn't know where the 
base was. It was kind of a joke comment, but that is what sparked the thought in Nick's mind. Where is this base? And that's the moment where Nick started to care about what happened to that base and who stole it. But Nick had a job to do at this point in time. His job was to make a new base for Paul McCartney in place of the missing one. And that's exactly what he did. In fact, Nick built a pretty accurate replica of the original base. Of course, there were some things now that we are aware of that were different now that they found the original, but it was pretty close. In fact, it was so close that many people saw Paul McCartney playing this new base and thought he found the original base that had been stolen. Nick was extremely busy working for Hofner Guitars. He was manufacturing guitars and working in their shop. Nick eventually became the marketing manager of the guitar manufacturer, and one of his jobs was to digitize all of the archives to put them all online. So by doing this, Nick was extremely familiar with every single type of Hofner guitar and what specifications each guitar would have in each decade. If anybody was going to recognize Paul McCartney's original bass guitar, it was going to be Nick. And if anyone was going to be able to debunk someone claiming to have Paul McCartney's bass guitar, it was going to be Nick. Nick was basically a Hofner expert. Nick's expertise reminds me a lot of George Groon. If you are not familiar with George Groon, he has a guitar shop here in Nashville, Tennessee, and he also just opened a manufacturing facility where he has been manufacturing his own line of guitars. But George Groon is the most knowledgeable person, I would argue, in the entire world about guitars, the history of guitars. Many people believe George has a photographic memory. I questioned him if he has a photographic memory. He told me, no, he definitely doesn't have a photographic memory, but what he does is he remembers trends. He's a fascinating person. He's right here in Nashville. We've known George for decades upon decades, and Nashville has known George for decades. I actually have a whole documentary about George Groon and his life, how he got into the guitar business in the first place. I go back all the way to his very first store in Nashville, Tennessee. I do need to remaster that audio, because it was one of my earlier episodes before I figured out this whole audio and YouTube thing. But it's such a great episode. Um, I will link that episode in the description down below. Go ahead and check it out if you're interested in George's story. But Nick was very similar to George in that he knew all of the trends and all of the eras, but very specifically to Hofner guitars because that is who he had been working for for so many years. And that is the type of guitar that Paul McCartney had stolen. Nick was very busy though, as I mentioned, working for the manufacturer. It wasn't until he had semi-retired, he decided to take up a passion project. And that passion project was finding the lost base for Paul McCartney. In 2018, Nick started a website called thelostbase.com. He also started an email address called info at thelostbase.com or something like that. It's like info at lost base. So if anyone had any information about Paul McCartney's lost base, they could email Nick directly with what they knew. Nick started getting several emails. People would say they knew the type of base. People would say they played something similar. Some people just had memories of Paul McCartney that really weren't helpful to finding the base, but were still fun to read. Someone in America actually caught wind of this website and emailed Nick directly convinced he had Paul McCartney's bass. Now, what was very specific about Paul McCartney's bass was that it was a left-handed bass. In fact, many people think that this was the first left-handed bass that had ever been manufactured. This man was sure that he had it. He sent Nick several photos and Nick actually flew from London to the United States to see this bass and see if it could have been Paul McCartney's. Now, the production dates on this base didn't line up with the production dates of Paul McCartney's. And there were other aspects of this base that made Nick determine this was not Paul McCartney's base. Nick flew back to London after visiting the United States and was kind of feeling defeated. He felt like he had a lot of dead end roads that had come about. People were emailing him and commenting things. And while some of it seemed like it could be a really promising lead, many of those comments and emails just kind of seemed to lead nowhere. In February of 2020, 
2023, a man emailed Nick from his website and told him he was an ambulance driver in London in the early 70s. He said he knew there was a van parked on a certain street that had equipment stolen from it and taken into a house and then sold at a local pub. Now, he actually said the street name in his email for confidentiality purposes. We're not revealing that street name. We will call it ABC Street for the purposes of this episode. So this random man emails Nick saying, you know, this van was parked on ABC Street. It had equipment stolen. It was definitely Paul McCartney's equipment. It included his base and it was then sold at a local pub. Nick gets this email around the same time he had gone to the United States and had this dead end road with this other bass guitar. So he's feeling like this is just another email. He doesn't think it's an actual lead. He thinks it's just someone commenting, you know, maybe just saying he knew that this happened and Nick's like, okay, great. You know that it was stolen. So do I. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. But he doesn't really investigate the street name. He just kind of reads the email and moves on with his life. Nick was actually starting to get frustrated because he knew his website needed to get better media coverage in order to get more traction from people. So he starts networking, trying to find people who can help him get his website and his passion project more coverage. In May of 2023, a couple reached out to Nick. Their names were Scott and Naomi Jones. Scott is a well-known London journalist and his wife Naomi is a top-level researcher who has worked for Channel 4 News in London and worked for BBC News. They reached out to Nick and said, we love what you're doing. We would love to help you. We will help in the research. We will help in the journalistic aspect of it. But most importantly, we can help you get this into the media. In the late summer and early fall of 2023, Scott and Naomi helped Nick do radio interviews, news interviews. They got it onto the six o'clock news in London. They posted articles articles and really revived this passion project Nick had started in 2018. On September 4th, 2023, an article went, quote, viral. It was just an international article about Nick's passion project, and the title of it was called, Have You Seen Paul McCartney's Lost Bass Guitar? Tips Welcome. And three days after that article was published, on September 7th, 2023, they created a Facebook group. On this Facebook group, they had Nick's email address, and they also linked Nick's website, thelostbase.com. Once Scott and Naomi decided to help out Nick, the very first thing they had to do was confirm the day and time the base had been stolen. I can tell you that just me, as Roots Music, I was able to go into my newspaper archives and do some simple searches to find the very week Paul McCartney released that plea to the thieves. And in those local articles, they are saying, you know, Paul McCartney, please, for help from thieves, his equipment was stolen Tuesday night. And that's key because these articles were posted on Thursday or Friday of that week of October in 1972. So counting backwards, Tuesday would have been October 10th. Now, like I said, that was just me being Roots Music. You know, I am a music journalist as well. I am also a music researcher, so I have access to these subscriptions. By the way, if you want to help support Roots Music, you could give me a super thanks by smashing the super thanks button down underneath this video. That helps me pay for my subscriptions and anything, anytime I need to pay to get access to research or to information. Your donations and your support are extremely helpful, not even just helpful, but imperative to keeping this channel alive and helping me research stories and get the most accurate information. And that's what they were doing here. I'm assuming that Naomi and Scott also went into the newspaper archives trying to find the exact week that Paul McCartney released this plea and the information that had been included on that day in 1972. One of the newspaper articles read, quote, Beatle guitar stolen. Former Beatle Paul McCartney appealed to a thief to return his famous bass guitar because of its, quote, sentimental value. The guitar, shaped like a violin, was among equipment worth about $1,250, which was stolen from McCartney's pop group in London recently. McCartney said he had owned the guitar for years and used it when he rose to fame with the Beatles. Another newspaper clipping actually specified where the guitar had 
had been stolen from. It said, Beetle Booty. Paul McCartney appealed last night for the return of a favorite guitar he used at the height of Beatlemania. It was stolen from a van in London's Notting Hill. So going through these newspaper articles, you get different bits of information. And then you have this article, for example, from the Owen Sound in Ontario, Canada from Friday, October 13th, 1972, that says stolen guitar has sentimental value. It's almost the same exact article, except it specifies that it was stolen Tuesday. Quote, the guitar shaped like a violin was among equipment worth about $1,250, which was stolen from McCartney's pop group in London Tuesday. So I'm just assuming Naomi and Nick and Scott were going through the newspaper articles just like I do, trying to get all of the information from different articles and put it all together. By doing that, they were able to debunk the majority of articles out there that claimed the guitar had been stolen in 1969. After they had publicly corrected the date, someone reached out to them saying he had been a roadie at the time and he knew how the guitar had been stolen. Nick, Scott, and Naomi obviously email this person back and say, tell us more. And it turns out his name was Ian Horn. He had indeed been a roadie for Paul McCartney in 1972 and was with Paul McCartney's entourage that Tuesday night of October 10th. He and his friend Trevor Jones, who has since passed on, were sound engineers for Paul McCartney. The van was 100% loaded when they arrived at the Notting Hill neighborhood. They arrived around 10 o'clock at night for a gig the next day and decided decided not to unload the van. Usually they would unload the van as soon as they got somewhere, but it was so late at night and they had been traveling all day. They decided to just keep the van locked up and park it for the night. They would come out the next morning to unload everything then. Their plan was to park the van at Trevor's house, but the way Trevor's house was configured and with everyone else who had arrived at Trevor's house for the gig the next day, there wasn't enough room or a proper place to park the van there. So they ended up parking the van on the street around the corner a little bit from Trevor's home. They padlocked the van and went to sleep, but when they came out the next morning, the van had been broken into and several pieces of equipment had been stolen along with this bass guitar. Ian Horn was able to give Nick and Scott and Naomi the street name where he had parked the van. He was also able to give them Trevor's address, or what Trevor's address would have been that night on Tuesday, October 10th. Nick hears this street name, ABC Street, and remembers an email he had gotten six months prior in February of 2023. Nick frantically went back to his emails. He responded to the person and said, I'm sorry, I didn't really pay attention to this six months ago, but I have more information now, so tell me more about what you know. That person responded right away and said he was an ambulance driver in the early 70s. He remembers driving his ambulance and overhearing a conversation in the back between a paramedic and someone else talking about this bass guitar. And the paramedic said he knew the guitar had been stolen from ABC Street on Tuesday, October 10th, that the guitar had been taken into a home and then was sold to a local pub. Nick is obviously probing this guy for more answers, but the ambulance driver said, that's really all I know. I was just driving the ambulance and overheard this. And Nick says, well, do you remember who the paramedic was in the back of the ambulance? And he says, yes. He goes on Facebook and finds the paramedic who had been talking about the bass guitar. He reaches out to him and says, hey man, I don't know if you remember me. I was your ambulance driver back in the day. We worked together and uh, listen, I found this project that this guy is working on. It's called The Lost Bass. And he's looking for any information about Paul McCartney's bass guitar that was stolen in 1972. You know, I remember hearing you talk about it. I know you know something. So would you be willing to talk to him and tell him what you know? The paramedic says sure and gets in touch with Nick. And the paramedic actually gave them the address of an apartment complex where he said the guitar was taken to immediately after being taken out of the truck. Now enter Naomi. 
Scott Jones's wife, the one who had worked at BBC and Channel 4 News. I always say, leave it up to a woman to find someone. Naomi was able to go back into the history of this apartment complex and find who all of the residents would have been on October 10th, 1972. She gets back the list of residents and is very surprised because she recognizes one of the last names of the residents who had lived there. And it is the same last name as the paramedic who told them he just knew that, knew that this happened. So Naomi, Scott, and Nick go back to the paramedic and they say, look, we're not gonna charge you with anything. We're gonna leave the police out of this. This was 52 years ago that this happened, you know, well beyond the statute of limitations. We just wanna know the truth. What do you actually know about what happened here? Because in 1972, this paramedic would have been a young child living in this apartment building. This young kid obviously saw something and absorbed what was happening and remembers it so many years later. Well, the young child says that his father had a habit of stealing. His dad also was a regular at a local pub in town. He says that his father took the bass guitar and all of this equipment out of this van on this Tuesday night and took it to his buddy who owned the local pub down the road and said, could you hide this for me for a little while? The owner of the pub said sure and hid it. I don't know if the owner of the pub knew he was hiding Paul McCartney's guitar or if he just knew that this guy had equipment and maybe he said, could you just store it for me. Maybe he didn't use the word hide. Maybe he just said, hey, I don't have a place for this. You know, I live in an apartment. Could you just store it for me for a while? And the guy said, okay. That's a little bit unclear, but according to this now paramedic, who was a young boy at the time, his father did this and sold it eventually to the man who owned the pub. The guy who owned the pub had two sons. His eldest son had recently taken up the bass guitar. So eventually the pub owner said to the paramedic's father, would you mind if I bought this guitar from you? Either that or the father said, it's for sale. Do you want it? I don't know. But either way, the owner of the pub gets the guitar and gives it to his son as a present. His son had the guitar for a period of time, but was tragically killed in a car accident while he was in college. After his oldest son's death, the younger brother got the guitar. So remember he had two sons youngest son gets the guitar and that son kept the guitar for decades. I don't know if the younger son played the bass guitar or if he just kept this guitar, but either way, his younger son has the guitar, keeps the guitar, ends up getting married to a woman. They end up living in London and the bass guitar is in the attic for years. Now, remember it was 2018 when Nick started his website, thelostbass.com, two years after Nick started this passion project and this website, that younger son passes away in 2020. And then three years after his passing is when this new article comes out in September 2023. This is when Scott and Naomi joined forces with Nick and were really getting this out in the media that they were looking for this bass guitar. Three years after his passing, the widow is sitting in the living room one night watching the six o'clock news when she sees this plea. If anybody knows anything about this bass guitar, it's a 1961 left-handed bass. If anyone has any information information, please reach out to info at thelostbase.com. And she's sitting there and she remembers her late husband had this old bass guitar in the attic and that this old bass guitar meant a lot to him. And she's wondering if this is Paul McCartney's bass. So she goes up there, takes a few photos, sends it to Paul McCartney's team. I'm assuming that wasn't specified, but I'm assuming this is how this all went down. Either that or she sent it to Nick at, at the info email address. But she ends up going to Paul McCartney's house with this base. And again, I'm not clear if she sent photos or if she literally just one day knocked on his door and was like, is this what you're looking for? But either way, this is indeed Paul McCartney's guitar and Nick has verified it. Like I said, Nick worked at the manufacturer for Hofner bass guitars. He knows every detail of this bass guitar, every detail the guitar would have, every detail the guitar would not have, but it, 
If this isn't divine music intervention, I don't know what is. That's what we talk about here on Roots all the time. If you're new to this podcast, we talk about the stories behind songs and legends, as well as deep dives into moments in music history. And I also have an entire merchandise line of divine music intervention mugs. So you can get a divine music intervention. It's almost like a Stanley cup or a coffee mug. And I also have a Roots merchandise store that you can buy anything Roots, a Roots bag, a Roots hat, um, a Roots cooking apron. There's literally anything you could imagine. I have links to both of my merchandise stores in the description down below. And Paul McCartney has his bass back. Like, holy cow. Now we need to find all of the other missing equipment that has been stolen over the years. <laughs> So tell me what you think in the comments down below. If you haven't already, subscribe to Roots Music and hit the thumbs up button. You have no idea how much that helps. Other than giving a super thanks, which is the most super thing you could do for the channel, just subscribing is free and giving it a thumbs up is free. That really pushes my videos up in the YouTube algorithm so that more people see my content and can hear these stories. So smash the like button, give it a subscribe. And if you are listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any other podcast, you can also follow this podcast on your podcasting platform. You can also ask any device in your home. You could say, hey, so-and-so, Google, Alexa, someone like that, play, quote, the latest episode from Roots Music History. And any device should play my latest episode right then and there. You can also follow me on Instagram, Roots Music History. I put little clues about what my next documentary podcast episode is going to be on my Instagram. So go ahead and try to find those clues and let me know if you can figure out where I put those subtle clues and what the next Roots documentary is going to be. I try to post an episode at least every week, but sometimes if it's a real deep dive that requires a lot of research and a lot of interviews and a lot of boots on the ground investigating, it can take longer, it can take 10 days, it can take 20, but I definitely post at least once or twice a month. So go ahead and follow if you love music and if you love history as much as me, and I will see you on the next Roots Rockumentary. And congratulations to Paul McCartney. We are all so happy for you. <laughs> Hungry for the road all my life. Thirsty for adventure all my youth. Chasing all my freedom 